Hello there and welcome to another A Posteriori Gears Bot tutorial. Alright, welcome back to the final installment of uh, Sumo Wrestling in the Gears Bot environment. In the last video we discussed the general algorithm for the Sumo Bot wrestler. And the only thing we left off from there is an optimization bit for how to deal with pointing directly at your Sumo Bot wrestler. And uh, just one general approach, and I don't want to deal with that too much in, in this particular tutorial, is that different distances away from the robot, once you see the robot, there, there's probably an extra angle or an, an extra bit of rotation that you can pursue in order to be in the center. And again, uh, depending on how far away you're seeing your, your, your wrestler from you, that rotation will be slightly different. And you can play around with that and create a small formula of added time to rotate once you see uh, the dummy in front of you or a real other robot wrestler in front of you. Uh, but I, I, this is just the, the approach, and I would like for you to, to try to do that on your own and basically uh, get better at focusing on the center of your opponents. Once you've done that, we basically uh, come to the end, really, of uh, your sumo challenges for the normal arena. Uh, you can also test a borderless ring, uh, how to deal with uh, a ring that has no color border. Uh, this is not necessarily a general default way of playing sumo bot competitions. Uh, normally, you would have some indication in color, uh, the difference between the middle of the surface and the edge. But uh, you can use various sensors to, to do this, either the color sensor itself, uh, where it stops detecting white, or, or other things. And another challenge, which isn't really in the uh, normal sumo uh, competitions, would be uh, obstacles in the ring. So something like having pillars in the middle of the ring. And... Uh, you can think about approaches to this. You basically need a way to differentiate between stationary objects and wrestlers, which might be stationary, uh, even in, in the case of robots who don't move. But I think the difference here, hint, would be that uh, your general uh, robots have size limitations, and uh, let's say the size limitations are roughly the, uh, the box of these uh, fixed dummies, and the size limitation of your pillars is different and always going to be, let's say, taller. Another uh, way to differentiate is by color. But in this world, you can definitely use color to differentiate between uh, these dummies and pillars. Okay, um, I'll let you explore those worlds on your own if you would like. But I would like to introduce us to the arena. Okay, so I, I have my basic robot from before. <coughs> And I would like to now uh, put my robot uh, into the arena and see how it does against itself. Okay, uh, possibly we could use it against another robot that's stationary. But uh, let's let's go into the arena and see uh, how this robot does against itself. If I clone this and create two robots like this, how would they fight each other? And uh, we go to the arena, uh, it will ask us to upload a zip package of your robot. And the zip package basically contains your code as well as your robot configuration that you've selected. So in this case, it's the simplest robot configuration. I will zip my robot up and I will call it uh, a good name, Basic Sumo. And again, uh, click zip save your robot uh, now that your robot is saved you can go to the arena you click on arena click go to arena it will open a new tab inside the arena uh, under the bots tab you are able to choose up to four players and choose the zip package for up to those four players so i will just choose two players in this case uh, player one will have my basic sumo zip and my player three will have the basic sumo zip and I will instantiate both of them. I could even instantiate a further player that has no package and will just be a stationary. And let's go see what that looks like. Oh, um, this is not the sumo arena, so we need to also change our world. 
Once we click on the Arena tab, you can change your world to the Multi-Robot Arena. In there, you can choose Paintball, Color Collector, or Sumo. We'll choose Sumo. Uh, you can have a time limit. You can stop the robots when the time limit is, is up. Uh, you can randomize things a bit. Um, this is only useful for when you're testing things with a single player. All right, so this is <clears throat> what our uh, environment looks like. <clears throat> it's going to be uh, pretty simple to know which two are have my sumo zip package and which robot doesn't. So this is player one, this is player three, this is player two. And uh, the dance begins. Okay, uh, since both robots are basically seeing each other, they're just pushing forward. If one of them slips to the side <clears throat> and doesn't see anymore, it'll start turning, giving an advantage to the other robot. Uh, there is no clear reason uh, other than the geometry of, uh, you know, who's got uh, more of the other person's uh, uh, mass in front of it that it's pushing. Um, and now, the light blue robot, player one, I believe, is, is actually pushing against two of them uh, because the red is starting to, to push uh, against the yellow player two robot. Not sure exactly what's happening right now with, with the red player. It shouldn't really see anything in front of it. It's probably trying to rotate, but it's getting stuck. So it, it is moving backwards and and forwards on the other wheel, so it is trying to turn, but it just can't. And that's what a lot of wrestling, uh, sumo wrestling matches look like. So uh, I would like to give one of these robots a bit of an advantage. Uh, without doing any coding, uh, there are still ways I can add some advantages here. And in order to change the physical design of my robot, I need to go back to the regular gears bot. This is the arena. So I go back to gears bot and uh, under gears bot, I will go to the robot menu and choose the robot configurator, which again will open a new tab for me. So now we have uh, our basic robot and to this robot, we can start making changes. You can change the size of the robot, but it doesn't actually affect um, weight or distribution of weight uh, if we added ele uh, physical elements to it. So just adding more weight, which is normally uh, one possible uh, advantage one robot would have over another in, in SumoBot, that can't be done uh, given the limitations of our physics engine. But there are other physical design choices that you can make that would improve your chances of defeating another robot. Um, you can add various attachments to this robot. Uh, you could possibly add an actuating arm that swings around and pushes people around, but uh, there are simpler elements that would usually help. Uh, if you look at normal sumo bot designs, most of them would have a sort of a snow plow design for the front of their body. Something that would help basically pick up and push another robot so that when their wheels are moving, they're, they, they're not actually moving against the floor. They're actually moving against the surface of the snow plow that is picking them up or possibly picking them up in such a way that their wheels are not making contact with any surface. So those are the kinds of physical design choices that you can make that can improve your robot. You know, you can, you can add sort of a ramp down here that might pick up a robot. You can do it in different rotations and permutations and test it and see what works. How do you do those things? Once you've opened your configurator, you can add various things to the robot. You can add boxes. You can add the different kinds of sensors, various actuators, for instance, a swivel arm or a paintball launcher. But for the purposes of, of your sumo bot design, we're just going to add various boxes, various static elements on our robot body. When you add a box, it adds a tiny little bit right on top of the robot. It's not even sitting on the robot in this particular configuration. It's hovering over it. So we want to, let's say, add a ramp underneath the robot where 
if other robots get on it, they are going to be traveling on, on your robot and not on the floor. So they won't be pushing against your robot, really. So let's try to do that. We will increase the size of this box. In order, to, If I change things now, notice I'm on, I'm, I'm on the body. So I don't want to change uh, my body yet um, or at all. So I'll pick the box first. And you can see it's uh, highlighted. It's got this uh, glowing border on the edges. And now I can start making it bigger. I can start making it wider, let's say. I can make it uh, deeper. So it's a little platform. Maybe I'll make it very thin. Okay, like a little uh, floor. And uh, if I put this basically at the front of my robot, let's see what that looks like. I will need to change its position. The top one changes its, uh, let's call it the X. And the second one changes the height. And the last one would change where it is bet between the front and the back of the robot. So we also want to change its height position at some point. It's on the floor. it's below the floor okay here we go uh, so we can see that there's a maybe a slight problem with it that um, it's it's it might uh, affect the color sensor so we need to think about that um, but let's first position it sort of where we want it to be uh, let's assume we want it to be somewhere over here in front of our robot and maybe on the floor further down as far down on the floor we can get before we're below the floor. Okay, minus four seems to be underneath the floor, so we'll try minus 3.5. Okay, so here we have uh, a little carpet that uh, maybe will uh, help us pick up other robots along our way. And uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit wider so that it can uh, really collect uh, from you know if I'm hitting things at different angles and I'll just add maybe two uh, columns that connect this floor to our robot <clears throat> it won't actually make a big difference but uh, it will look more uh, possibly realistic as something that can actually be created so we'll add another box highlight the body again and add a box to the body so here's a second box I'll move that around a bit as well highlight it first and uh, this one I'll probably want to make it uh, just long, deep, and uh, I'll rotate it a little bit, but first let me position it somewhere on one side of the robot's body, bring it forward a bit, maybe that's okay, and bring it into sticking out of the robot good and maybe we can uh, start rotating it and bring it down again maybe bring it back up a bit okay so something like this and we can create uh, uh, another box just like that on the other side And we can pretty much make a symmetrical version of that, symmetric version of that on the other side. So where this was four, this would be negative four. The other two elements probably the same, negative two, and I thought it was nine. And rotations were 30, zero, zero. And the depth was Okay, so uh, something along the lines of this. Okay, um, uh, we can try this and see where it takes us. So in order to save this and bring it into our world, we need to uh, click Save to File under the File menu. Uh, we'll probably want to give it a good name. Uh, let's call it a Sumo Scoop. Let's save that. 
file, save to file. It creates a sumo scoop JSON file. It saves it wherever you're saving files. And then I'll go back to my regular program. And uh, you can see here I, I was trying some other designs before. We will now uh, go to the robot menu, load from file from the robot menu, click on the sumo scoop.json file that I just created, and now we see our, our new robot. And we can just try to uh, make sure that it, it can move around. And we can see it's not exactly picking up that uh, box, but it is interacting with it and pushing it. Uh, so that's something. And now we can test this against our other robots in the arena as well. I haven't changed the algorithm for, for the sumo wrestler. All I did so far was change the, the scooper mechanism. Okay, so after I bring this robot into the normal Gearsbot world, I now have this different configuration. So I, I have this robot loaded. I also have my code, right, for my uh, sumo algorithm. And finally, I will need to export the zip package that contains both the code and the robot configuration. And uh, let's call this uh, Scoop Sumo to differentiate it with um, my other basic sumo. Okay, the file was exported. And now I can go back to my uh, arena and load my Scoop Sumo zip. Okay, great. So now I have three different types of robots. And let's see what happens. Nothing happens. All right, some uh, slowness in the starting of the of the program. So we can right away see that uh, while uh, while while our scooper wasn't good at uh, picking up those static wrestlers and the, uh, the the dummies from our other worlds, it is pretty good at uh, forcing wheels to to drive over it. And once the wheels start drive over over it, they stop up. The robots that are attached to those wheels don't apply any more force against the robot. Uh, still, it's quite hard to, uh, <laughs> once you get sandwiched, to, uh, to deal with that. So let's see. Let's give it a chance to see, see where we go with this. Oh. Whoa, okay. Ah, very good. Scooper wins. Okay, so you can try now to create your own different configurations. There's lots of other types of robots that you can make. And have fun with that. And I'll close out with uh, one last awesome wrestling match that we created. It gives you some ideas also about different robot designs and possibly uh, different uh, changes to the basic algorithm. And let you try it on. And I hope you enjoyed Sumo wrestling in the gears bot arena and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, with us on some other tutorials have a great time exploring